and starts recording i'll get on conscious and I'm like okay whatever i say my editor is going to edit that and make me look like a fool that is also there <laughs> how the hell do we start this thing so, so this is a controversial question which i'm going to ask you Good morning, guys. Today we have with us Alex Zakaria, who is coming to us all the way from Canada, and we are lucky and we are extremely happy to have him on the screen. Welcome, Alex, to another episode of Aam Aadmi Podcast. Thank you, Kevin. Happy to be here. So we thought that today we will discuss a topic that needs a lot of discussion, a lot of education among the people now, a lot of stress because people need to know. so today i thought we will discuss about the importance of acceptance and tolerance of lgbt community among us before we go into the technicalities of that i thought normally or among our people there will be a few questions that they would have in their mind which right. they might not ask but that is there in their mind so i thought i will be a representative of those aam aadmi people and i'll ask you a few questions and i hope Oh, if you are comfortable enough you can answer those questions oh, for sure <laughs> so the first and foremost thing that any person would think to think about is that when did you know about this and how did you know about this so <clears throat> i say that's like a two part question so like, when did i know about it i knew it from the beginning uh, when i was born that i was gay uh, i was attracted to same sex uh, more than opposite sex and even though my attraction for opposite sex was nothing it's not the same as um uh, it's more like a what to call a fandom or a appreciation of their beauty or whatever uh but it's different from my attraction towards the same sex so i knew it from the beginning and how did i know i don't know i just knew it it's the same way like if uh, you or anybody uh any st- other people who identify themselves as straight i could ask them the same it's the same way they know that they are straight uh, i know i'm straight i'm gay so because another question that everyone in india asks is that how do they know they are gay when you when you're saying that you accepted that you are gay i am assuming that you've been with a girl and you did not like the experience is that right it's like i've um uh, my experiences with other people were not the same as it would have been with a man and i knew it and i didn't put myself through that and i didn't even put the others the other person through that either like i don't want to make the other person's experience as bad as i knew how it would be mine mine would be um when did i know i answer like i knew it from the beginning i think the most what most people struggle with especially coming from the indian background is when they struggle to accept it so you live in a lot of denials just because that's what the society uh, or the community that you live in are used to used to do or teach you to do it's not the norm or they tell you it's not normal it's not the it's not how it should be so they kind of they don't even have a discussion they just believe it and make you believe like that that this is what how it how it should be so for me there came a point in my life where i had to take a stand and go through that struggle accept myself because i wasn't my quality of life and everything wasn't that good even when i was in canada it did help me a lot it helped me a bit but again most of the work i had to do it by myself there is a lot of psychological work that i have to do there is a lot of things that i have to deal with um and come to terms with the true self that i am it's more more than a, like a naive question of how did you accept it or whether how do you know whether you are gay if if you haven't been with a girl it's the same way that i would ask like we joke around with my friends and it's just, it's not even though it's like a joking question a uh, funny question or an answer uh it's a very seri- it's a serious one too like how does a straight person know that they are straight until they have tried with somebody of their same sex that is true that so, is very true 
yeah so it's it's the same way so i understand then that there are a few steps involved right so you're saying you knew about it mm-hmm. and yeah it makes sense when you say that like how a straight person knows he's straight uh, another person would know that he's a is gay right it makes sense now the second part is you accepting the fact that you are gay mm-hmm. right and then the yeah. third part is you letting your people know or you you coming out and letting people know that you are gay and them accepting it so how was it from the second stage to the th- third stage i understand it would have been a very hard phase of your life if i may ask who did you first come out to who did you tell first so the first person who i came out to was my girlfriend at that time and we had this conversation and i thought she was she should be the first person to know correct and uh i wanted to be honest to her with her and we had this conversation and she was very supportive she was very supportive she accepted it and uh even though it was not a cake walk it's both of us we had to educate ourselves and we had to accept and respect each other so there was acceptance and respect that came together so i was very fortunate with that and after that even though there was like with my if when i move with the next important part of me was my family so i decided to write a letter and send it to my parents um and it was a difficult time so coming out everybody has different experiences my experience with the act of coming out and it's funny that we are having this discussion because uh this week was national coming out day international yeah. coming out day so it's kind of funny that we are going through the story to me coming out was terrifying uh scary but at the same time the most fulfilling thing that i've ever done you are hiding yourself who you are and everything from the people that matters to you the most people who you love and respect the most your friends your family your parents and you're just taking off that mask and you're coming out to them it requires a lot of courage uh and believe believe in yourself like you have to the belief in yourself so for for me i wrote a letter to my parents i think it was a 6 or 8 page letter like a handwritten letter so you and were did, in at what phase of your life you were in your college then or you started working no actually i was in uh i was i finished my undergrad in canada and i was doing my masters in canada okay. and i actually did it when i was in france i was uh traveling through france and on one of like for a month long vacation so i just decided to go to france and that's when i decided to write a letter so i hand like i didn't even want to send an email you know to be honest i thought i i i wanted to come out but the fear this the fear in me was hoping the mail will be lost in the mail because i wanted to send it the old fashioned snail mail thing so i handwritten mail and i posted with the cheapest stamp so it's the slowest mail that you can get in france <laughs> and send it to india so then a week later i came back to canada so it was the last day i'm taking my flight and at the airport i dropped the plane and uh, the letter and i came to canada so a week later i'm calling my parents and i asked them oh did you get any letter please from me and they're like no we didn't get anything two weeks nothing uh two and a half weeks later uh i asked oh did you get a letter oh yeah we got a letter and there was no reaction so i was like oh what everything is okay <laughs> but then a day later in the middle of the night my time i get this phone call and my mother was bawling she was crying she was like what's going on blah 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 so they actually read the letter a day later and they understood it and they called me i'm very fortunate to have and i'm very grateful to my parents and i understand it was difficult to them for them as much as it was as difficult for me so we both had to go through that phase of life where we we were under trying to understand something that we the both parties wasn't know about i didn't know how my parents would feel and my parents didn't know what it is the way the uh community that they were brought up the way that they were brought up the religious beliefs that they were brought up church 
all those things uh, contributed to that factor. It took them a couple of months, and but I still remember uh, one thing that my mom told me was that she asked me, is it something that we did? Like, what did we do wrong? Like, is it the way that we brought you up? What is it? And I said, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, there's nothing wrong with what you did. Neither there's anything wrong with me. This is who I am. And then at the end, the last thing my mom told me before she hung up on the phone after like two hours of crying and conversing and everything was that no matter my, what, you are my son and I love you and that you, I want you to remember that all the time. Like we may not agree on everything. We may not accept things, but at the end of the day, you are my only son and I love you. And I don't think it was nothing to do with being a son. Or she would have done the same to my sister. Like she, like she, and, and both my parents would have done the same thing, my same to my sister and supported her through that too, in their own way. So I was fortunate. It was not an easy uh, thing to do for me, as well as it wasn't an easy thing for my parents to do it either. From what I understand for them, there's a lot of concern, but the most important concern was what other people might say. That's the main issue that we have back in India, specifically yes. Kerala. I, I don't think just Kerala. Everywhere the same issue is there. What will others think about us? What will others say? That's what governs most of their life, right? And that's sad. That's truly sad. Because they do that, what happens is that they limit themselves to a lot of things. They do not experiment. They do not try new things. They give so much importance to the the way people, others think that they lose out on many things and they don't even know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not, it's, it's not just about uh, your sexuality or anything. It's even with your career choices. Like, okay. Like when we grew up, it was, Oh, you have to become an engineer, yeah. a doctor or a huh. accountant or something. It's, the, the list stops at the one or two, three or four things, but people don't realize there's so much more out there. Uh, I think we should do we should do what we love doing so that we can be the best in what we are doing and be the just enjoy like going to work should not be like a chore it should be something that you should look forward to correct correct exactly so and that's what I've done with my life even like my career choice whether it is to do with my career choice like I went to school for something else totally different and career-wise, what I'm doing is also nothing to do with that. And um, I'm happy with whatever, whatever it is. So that's what I wanted to ask you about that exactly. So once you yeah. got that sense of freedom, like how once you came outside and then you could be yourself and you don't have to wear a mask after that, did that give you a sense of freedom to choose how do you want to live? Because as you rightly mentioned right now, what you studied is not what you're doing now. You went after your passion after that. Like it, it's like someone was tying you and then there was that invisible knot that is not allowing you to run. And all of a sudden you got that option to run and then you took it. Coming out didn't help you in living a better life. A life where you can make your own choices. I was making my own choices even before that. But coming out did, uh, it was a feeling of like, you know, a weight that you've been carrying for 20 years was just lifted away from. And that is huge. And that is emotionally, psychologically, and even physically, it's real. So that was the big thing for me. And the effect of it is I was much more happier. I was much more uh, confident in what I was doing, what I want to do, and being out there. So until then, I was living, like, of course, I was living like a part of me was still lying. Like in Canada, nobody cares. But every time I'm going to India or I'm speaking to somebody in India or to, or even to my parents, I felt like I'm hiding a part of me that I would love to share with them, but I wasn't ready. But as soon as I was able to do that, now I can talk to them about my life, the part of life that I was hiding for the past 20 years. I can discuss with them discuss about boyfriends, discuss about other things, the struggle that we go through our relationships. Uh, so that was a big thing. So that, that did help me a lot. 
uh, I did save a lot of money going through, uh, like, instead of going to a psychotherapist, like a psychologist, I did save a lot of money just doing that, coming out and being true to myself. I just wanted to know about this. You know, I understand you got your, um, you went to study abroad and that was not a choice which you made on your own. You got a grant and then you went abroad, right? If I'm not wrong. It was a choice that I made myself. I really wanted to do that. Okay. Just because I wanted to uh, explore and I, I was, it was nothing to do with me being gay or whatever. At that time, at that point uh, in my life, for me, I was just thinking about education and I wanted to explore and have a different experience. Coming outside India, seeing the world, understanding that this is normal, did that help you to make the decision of coming out? Definitely. So until then, probably it was when I was probably 16 or 17, uh, when I was in India, that's when I started to educate myself about LGBTQ community, LGBT rights, uh, of what is going on around the world, as well as in India. And also I met some other people like me in India. All of us were facing the same problems at home, uh, in the communities that we lived in, in school, everything. So that's when I realized it is normal. Until then, I was in this constant struggle of, okay, what is wrong with me? Like in Canada, that would never happen. I'm not saying probably with the one or two percent in the community because of their religious beliefs and where how they are brought up, they might think that still there. It's still there. I'm not saying everything is beautiful, colorful rainbow here either, but everybody knows, everybody accepts uh, who they are, who their kids are, even when they are two year old, five year old, if they come and say that mom, mom or dad, I'm, I think I'm gay or I'm attracted to Danielle or David they will be like, oh, that's cool. We'll see. We will explore. And there's LGBTQ alliances in school. Even in like grade two, grade three, you have alliances. People who can, you can, coming out to my friends, coming out to people who I love, even though they probably didn't accept me. The most important thing was I accepted myself. And it gave me the courage. It gave me the confidence to face the world, uh, bridge the gap between people. And people could, rather than seeing my seeing me as a gay personality or an like a person, like my sexual life. They to see my academics, my acumen, my talents, and my ability to lead them. And I think that is what is more important. And that's also something that as a community, any community, whether it is in India or anywhere else, that we should focus on. A gay person, an LGBTQ person, is same as anybody else. Correct. There is Correct. nothing wrong. It's the same... Like everybody has the same talents. Everybody has the same ability to do things. They are not second class citizens. There is nothing wrong with them. It is not a mental illness. That's right. Um, yeah. Sexual orientation has nothing to do with how we are or what we are. No. It's just a part of life. And, and everyone and should accept what, that. Yes. Like to, if, you, if you go to the core, we are human beings. And right. sometimes we forget that. And that's why we treat other people with so much hate and cruelty and everything. Like, why do we even worry about your color of the skin, like racism issues, sexism issues, like your gender or whatever? No, forget all about it. At the end of the day, we are just human beings having, like, spending, what is it, like 70 years, 80 years on this planet on an average? And we just move on. So in that 80 years, would you rather spend time hating other people or judging other people of what they do on their own private, personal time? They, those people, like, they are having a good time. You are the one who's probably thinking about them, judging them and creating that hatred in, in, within you, and you're having a bad time. So I'm like, okay, well, it's bad on you. And the funny part is that all those people who have this homophobia, I'm pretty sure I've read an article saying that those people are actually scared that they might also be a gay person or a cure or from the LGBT community. And they don't I'm want to accept that. A, yeah, I'm not making a generalized statement here, but I can speak from my own experience. The biggest homophobic people uh, that I've met are gay, are gays themselves. But they've not and come they, out yet. They're no, hiding it. And it's, it's not about coming out. It's about accepting right. again. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest challenge. Uh, accepting and 
it's not about like before you be true to other people, you have to be true to yourself. Correct. Make so sense. that is the biggest struggle and the uh, the intimidation or the aggressiveness that you see from homophobic a homophobic person is because of this internalized anger. So they had to let it out some through some way. So they just focus on this thing because it's something that they struggle with. And that is why we need to have more education, more support group, the importance of having the conversation like we are having now so that everybody should understand that there is nothing wrong with it. You came out, you went outside India, you saw it was normal. So it was e- it's easier for you to take the first step as accepting it and then coming outside, right? Mm-hmm. How many billions of people would be there in India who still are, are scared to come outside and speak about it? Definitely, there is, like, like you said, like there's millions of people who are still scared, but... At the same time, there are other millions of people who have already come out and are leading the path in India. I've had so many stories uh, of uh, people and my friends who are in various parts of India, in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, in South India, in North, everywhere, in all parts of India, where they have come out and they are leading the path so that there is a conversation that will start. Every country goes through these things. And even in the States, you know, still there is discrimination. There is this uh, talk about this thing. And you consider it as a more like a developed country mm-hmm. with high education, high GDI, etc. But still, gay rights is always under question there. Even last week, there was a Supreme Court opinion that was given, which could re- go back to canceling the gay marriage, equal marriage rights that they had. Mm-hmm. that they have in U.S. that they might even think about canceling it. So, like, it is a constant struggle. It's like, you have to, there is, I think it's also the fact that uh, there's always a constant scrutiny of what I do or how I carry myself as a LGBTQ person. They think that, uh, there is all kinds of different people. Some people think, oh, this person is too effeminate. Or this people, this per- this woman is uh, what we call a butch. She is a tomboy. She is a lesbian, you know? So there's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of things of how you, how people see you rather than what you can do, what your talent is. So the struggle is real. It's always going on, whether it is in India, whether it is in Canada, whether it is in the States, no matter where. In this last 27 years of your life or 29 years of your life, was there a part of your life where you were bullied or you have bad memories because you your sexual orientation was different, be that in school, college or workplace? Did something like that happen? Is that normal? Um, well, I was bullied in school in different ways. Like there is name calling, being bullied. It has happened to me, like the telltale story of any gay kid in India or in any country. It has happened to me. At the same time, people who took advantage of me uh, being, whether it is like as a sexual assault or things like that, at that time, I didn't know it. And I thought, this is like, what should I, I didn't know what to do. But it took me so many years, like probably when I was uh, 15 or 16 is when I realized that what, what, other what these people are doing to me is not right and i have to speak up for myself and it had to stop so there's a lot of self-victimization there's a lot of guilt there's a lot of shame that was associated with it during that time not just because of the bullying it did cost a lot but at the same time how other people were treating me how other people were taking advantage of my uh, insecurities um so yeah I did face all those problems. So does it gradually decrease from school to college to workplace? Because ideally people get more mature when they grow up and they have a better perception of what life is towards college and towards, not towards college, maybe towards work. That didn't help? Yeah. Um, I think it did because I did, like I, after my uh, 12th grade, I did two years of university in India. And even then I had, Even though the bullying did reduce there, I had a group of friends who were very supportive, 
who I'm still in touch with and who are part of my life. They are like a family to me. So even though I never came at that time, I never came out to them like, hey, I'm gay. Like I never told them. I'm pretty sure they knew it even then. And even when I came out to them, they were like, when I call them, hey, I got to tell you something, I'm gay. And they're like, oh, okay. So uh, what did you have for dinner? You know, for them, that's the kind of conversation that we had. Uh, So it did change. It did change. And it is changing. So as you told that the wheel is in motion, people are getting to know about it. It's just that we should act as a catalyst and get to educate people more. Because the other day when I was just before the interview, I just wanted to do a little bit of research. And I went online and I searched about the hate that the LGBT community is receiving. And I was amazed. I was not, it's not amazed. I was actually disgusted. I I understand there are conversion camps. I understand Uh there are conversion camps done by religious institutions. I understand Uh there is specific counseling session to make a person not gay. I understand that you know there are there is there is marriage forced forced marriage happening, where the parents feel that you know after my boy gets married or my girl gets married they'll be fine. Uh-huh. So even though the rule came into being in 2018, I still think that the government or the people should take a lot of effort into educating people that this is not a deviation, this is not a disease. It's normal to be so. Yeah, for sure. And again, regarding this uh, sham counseling sessions and gay conversion therapy camps and the religious people there, what they are trying to take advantage is people, people uh, like not like having unaware of these things as well as their lack of knowledge. It's a business lack of, where they are cashing in on the insecurities. Yes, insecurities and lack of awareness and knowledge. Correct. So that is what programs like this, like the conversations like these, as well as some effort that needs to be done by NGOs and other organizations, even governmental organizations, the medical system, those systems should work holistically to provide those education so that people don't lose their life, money, their life savings, and their entire family over these sham conversion therapy camps and counseling sessions and, I don't know, like, eat a fish and you become ungay yourself. I don't know what what kind of magic people do. So it doesn't work and it's not going to change who you are. And the people who are talking about marriage, like forced marriage, I just want them to think one thing. You know you are gay. You know what your sexual orientation is. You know what your brothers or sisters or your son's sexual orientation is he or she is an LGBT community. And even if you still believe that, that is going to change when you get married. You are not just destroying your own son or your own cousins or really, or your relatives' life. You are bringing in an entire new, like an innocent person into this whole, pardon my language, shit show and destroying that person and directly and indirectly you are also causing pain and damage to that family too so why would you want to do that and why would you like if if a person like me who's questioning their sexuality and if they're thinking oh yeah i could get married b first discover who you are understand who you are then make a decision because it's not something that pertaining to you it involves somebody else and that's what i always say as long as you you live your life without hurting anybody else their life that's good that's how you should be so do you, do you think that you know this is an education like the first point that we always mentioned here being aware being yeah. knowing that this is fine this is okay to feel so do you think this should be included in the curriculum for a school going student? Like I, I'm pretty sure you and me growing up or anyone watching this show, I'm pretty sure the chapter 10 of biology in your 10th standard reproductive systems. Organs. Yeah. yeah. Organs. That is a chapter that is never taught. 
teacher will be like okay you go read it and come if there is any doubt you come to me and no one goes right that's the yeah. first thing that has to be changed but i think what i feel personally is that there should be sessions when you are in school for the teachers i mean yeah initially for the teachers and then for the students and for the parents saying that it's fine now because it's a, it's a rule now and it's a decriminalized and we have all accepted it don't you think it is required a counseling session when you are in school itself to accept who you are don't you think that will help think definitely it would but taking a step forward like a more step forward i would say one important thing like india it's an amazing country the education that we receive in india it's great uh one thing that we are lacking is sex education there i think it should be mandatory for everybody even when you are a child talking about your body parts what could be touched what is what is a cons- what is consent teaching about consent to both men women every individual like look at the cases like the rape cases that we are having the harassment that everybody men and women and kids children who go to school has to face on the buses the public transit system that they have to face they have to learn people need to be taught about consent about respecting others personal space about sexual orientation about sex safe sex um about everything how to use a condom how to use uh, uh how to pr- protect yourself from stis how to get treatment where to go how to do it so people need to be taught and this is more than this is educating everyone parents teachers should be educated parents should be educated guidance counselors should be educated students should be educated and it should start from there is no i think there is no age even to a 3 year old you should a parent should tell them and it should start from everybody's home like when you have a child or our friends who has child they should talk to their kids saying that you know if somebody touches you like these are the know your body parts and if you're if somebody touches you there and if you don't feel safe tell them tell to your parents that i didn't feel safe this person did this to me it should be stopped people had to be held accountable and there's a change that schools we... that are doing that now teaching the small mm-hmm. kids what a bad touch is and what a good touch is differentiating the yeah. so i think that that yeah. is in motion that is about yeah that's that. a change in a really good directions and again then then we can have this discussion about uh, sexual identities sexual orientation sexualities so that But there is a discussion that, that is going on before that what i thought is that we indians are a confused lot of people right we we are a collectively confused lot of people in the sense what i feel is that till you are at the age where you're getting married sex is considered a taboo right mm-hmm. no one speaks about sex if you are doing if you are indulging in that it is supposed to be something wrong you're not supposed to right and yeah. once you get married and if it is an arranged marriage in india then in your first night of marriage you are supposed to have sex with an unknown person where for the last 25 to 27 years it was considered taboo and it is wrong and then all of a sudden a window is open is like yeah, go go have sex now and the highlight is that how indian uh, society works or how things work in kerala is that from the second month onwards they ask you when are you getting pregnant yeah. right and and then then <laughs> then they are pressurizing you to have sex so you get married and you're supposed to get pregnant after a month yeah. or so right the concept of having fun while having sex is never taught mm mm-hmm. sex is just a I means of about... anyone to get pregnant in india i know and even i have to maybe it's the indian in me that even when i in my own personal life i had to face that and where sex i built there was a point in time where for me sex is just the act of sex there was no pleasure involved in it there was no mutual pleasure that was there it was it took me a while to realize there is much more than to it rather than having sex and i wish i had taught that i wish i had not even teaching 
I wish I had an opportunity to have a discussion with somebody who was a professional, like a psychiatrist or psychologist, who we can talk about and talk about human feelings and human touch and human emotions, where I can share and be a partner, a better partner to my partner, to our partner, whoever I'm with, rather than being this uh, going on with this societal norms or expectations where get married, get a job, finish school, get a job, get married, and within a year have a child. Nobody even asking whether the newly wed couple, probably they want to take three or four years getting to know each other, to have they're a life also, together. They're also they're to, specialized into having kids. It's not a decision yeah. like, like how it happened back in India. Getting married, you're getting pressurized. Having a kid, you're getting pressurized. Having the second kid, you're getting pressurized. Making that kid or kid into a doctor or an engineer, you're getting pressurized by the society. I know. Entire India works on pressure. And it's no, it's peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's it's um it's it's tough. It's not only tough on uh the parents, it's also tough on the kids. It's not fair so, on the kids. No, it's not at all. They are not allowed to choose what they want to do. Uh, yeah, it's it's sad. But but being said that, uh, I do have some friends from India who they who chose to go back to India and live there, have a life there. They have a they kind of bring this outlook where, like we discussed, this idealistic the idealistic dream that we both have, where everybody has a say. And everybody live with acceptance, respect, and uh, love for each other, for a fellow human being, care for a fellow human being. They have that ideology, and they are putting it into practice. And it is beautiful to see, whether it is with their kids or with their friends or family members. Congratulations on getting married. I understand it yeah. was year 2013 when you took the step. Con yeah, congratulations to you too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, you're married. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but it's been just one year for me but for you it's almost seven years now what are you having kids just kidding <laughs> <laughs> that can't be bro okay <laughs> yeah but yeah seven years you're into marriage right happily married couple uh, yeah. you are an example for many others on knowing that you can still lead a normal life as per the society you know, you can get married. You have a you have a partner whom you can whom can be with. You can start a family together. Mm -hmm. So you are an example. You are the right example for many people who would want to come outside. Right? You are a happily married person. You are a very successful person, and you are an extremely confident person now. So is Thank there something you. that you want to tell others who are who are scared to come outside or who are confused? Is there a message that you want to convey? My only message to them is I would always be realistic. It is going to be tough. It is hard. It is scary. It might look scary. It might look tough. It might look um, difficult. But once you've done it, once you cross that path, once you cross that bridge, it is the best thing that you probably ever have done in your life. But just with this action, you know who your real friends are. You know who your real family is. You know who are going to be with you no matter who you are. And those are the people that is the most valuable people in your life. So you realize those things, which in turn gives you this confidence, your ability to make and have a better life. And you're not, you're not lying anymore. You're true to yourself. And that itself will bring the happiness in your life. And you can see the difference. But I understand, and I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, I, I didn't have an easy come out. I had to deal with my emotions. I had to f uh, understand or try to understand my parents' emotions, their growth curve, uh, their fear, my fears. But at the end of the day, would I, like, do I, like, I don't regret anything that I've done. And, Yeah. And what about a message for the parents? Because they are also a part of this journey and them understanding would make it easier for the person to come out say. Yeah, it's true. Uh, for parents, um, I would say, love your child no matter what. And the only thing 
that you could do is to educate yourself. Make that effort because because you think your child like it's it's hard it's hard for you, and you must realize that how much painful it is for the child to see you in pain, love you. They understand that you love them. They understand, and they they all go through this emotions of guilt, uh, fear of whether I'm a disappointment or not. So they go through all these emotions. And during all this time, all they need is support and love. And if parents could do that, no matter what, that's the, you will be a successful parent. That's what a parent should do. And uh, I got it from my parents uh, at the, not always, I'm not saying it was easy, not always, but like I said, at the end of the day, we have this, we have this crazy arguments, like, you know how Indian parents are. We have this emotional drama stuff. But at the end of the day, I still, every day, I remember what my mother and my father told me. At the end of the day, you're our son, you're our child, and we love you. And no matter what happened to you, we are here for you. Last but not the least, what about a message to all the bullies that are there? All the homophobic people who comes and makes life hard for the LGBT community. Is there something that you want to tell to them? I would definitely would just want to show them the middle finger, but I think you would be able to give a better message to them. For me, it's like life is difficult for everybody, whether you are straight, you are gay, you are lesbian, you are transsexual, you are transgender or bisexual. Life is difficult for everybody as it is. Why do you have to make life difficult for somebody else? Like, why do you have to, like, we have enough hate and fight and wars and drama going around this planet. We don't need any more of that. Why do we so complicate our life even more? Yeah. So to anybody who's out there who find this full pleasure, this fake pleasure in making somebody else's life miserable, just go back and think why you do it. What makes you do it? and fix it. That's all I can say. You would want them to go for counseling. Huh? <laughs> you would want them to be sent to conversion camps from a bully to become for a good sure. person. For huh? sure. From a hating person to a more loving and kind, compassionate person. That would be the ideal world that we would want to live in. <laughs> Anyways. Thanks, man. Thank you for letting us do this. Um, coming and speaking about this is a big thing. I am hoping that this video will be a motivation. This video will be an educational tool for the parents and for the people who are struggling, you know, to find themselves, to understand that normalcy and how, what they are. So thank you for doing this. It's been wonderful speaking to you. I hope I can get you on another episode some other day on a different topic where we can discuss more. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so much, Kevin. And thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I'm always happy to be there as a friend, as a cousin, as a yes. um, anything. Like, I'm always there. And good luck with all your endeavors, future endeavors. And I'm pretty sure uh, the AAP is going to be awesome. Thank you. I also thought of another thing. I thought we'll set up a Gmail account. And I will mention that at the end of this video. And I'll mention it in the comments also. So if at all someone wants to speak to you, oh, they'll just sure. write a mail to that particular Gmail ID and then you can respond back to it in the mail. Yeah, Is that sure. okay with you? Oh, yeah. And if somebody reach out, reach out, reaches out to you and have this, uh, if they need any guidance or for resources or anything, whether it is a person from the LGBTQ community or if it is a parent or anybody, you can connect me to them and I'm more than happy to help them uh, because it is important to have this conversation so that we can protect our kids, protect everybody from people who take advantage of them because of their insecurities and vulnerabilities. It and is very all the viewers, he's already committed. Don't hit on him. He's married. <laughs> Don't send mail saying that I love him, I want to meet you and all. That's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> For more informative and exciting talks and chat shows like this, like, share, and subscribe to Amadni Podcast. The link is down there. And support Kevin and everybody who's coming onto the show from different facets of our life.
Thank you, Kevin, for this opportunity. Thank you, Imad. I did not make him say that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thank you, man. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.